everybody, welcome back to the shop. So I'm gonna do a little follow-up video today on our making lawnmower blades video. I really appreciate everybody's positive input, information, ideas on the previous two videos on making your own homemade lawnmower blades. Uh, I'll put a link here if you haven't watched it yet to start with video number one of how we made some homemade lawnmower blades here for using out here on my farm. If you haven't already subscribed to the Do Right Fabrication YouTube channel, down below is a link that says subscribe. Click subscribe and then make sure you click the bell. That way you'll get an email every time I post a new video. This video series, I was attempting to try to figure out how to make inexpensive lawnmower blades. This is a factory made Kubota lawnmower blade. This lawnmower blade has gone from $12 a piece to $27 a piece. I need three blades for my mower, plus the shipping puts it right at about 100 bucks for a set of blades. Now in the previous videos, lots of people had a lot of comments to say about what are you mowing, like rocks and gravel and junkyard parts and whatever. We live in Florida, there's sand everywhere here. Sand is prevalent. Think of a sandblaster. When that lawnmower blade is spinning around, that lift is lifting the sand up, and then that blade hits that sand multiple times as it spins around. So for hours and hours, that blade is constantly being in a sandblaster, it's being worn away. Now in the very first video, I reached out and asked some people to give me some ideas on these, the alloy that the material was made out of, because I really don't know. So lots of people had advice. Some of that included, I needed to use a material that can be hardened, I needed to case harden the material, I needed to heat, and then cold quench, either in oil or salts, these blades to make them harder. Here's what's gonna happen. We're just gonna drill a hole in this blade to see how hard it is. This is a brand new drill bit, complements a drill hog. They're really high quality, lifetime warranty drill bit. They donated this to the Bar Z Summer Bash. I want it as a raffle prize. We're just gonna put a little lubricating oil down there on it. And you can see that the drill bit drills into it with ease. The swarf is coming out. If I put down a lot of pressure, the swarf will roll off of there and not chip out like if it was a real hard material. I'm slowing down the pressure because I'm about to break through the bottom. And there you have it. It's very malleable stuff. It's not hard. I would tend to say that this is not a hardenable alloy. I would have to say it's mild steel or something very close to mild steel, but it is definitely not spring steel, not with drilling that easily. So let's dispel a couple of rumors. Number one, a lawnmower blade should never be made of hardened material. A lawnmower blade, if it strikes a hard object, you want it to give, you want it to bend. Because if it doesn't, it'll fracture. And when it fractures, it'd be like a hand grenade going off under the lawnmower deck. So that material that you make that blade out of needs to be of a material that's malleable. Mild steel is one of those things. Now mild steel typically is any steel that has less than 0.25% carbon in it. The reason they call it mild steel is because it's mild tempered or mild mannered, meaning that when we weld mild steel and then it's quenched by the cool air around, the material doesn't get harder because we weld it on it. It can't be hardened or probably the more correct thing to say is mild steel can't harden very much because it just doesn't have the carbon in it to harden, which brings into case hardening. A lot of people suggested that I case harden these blades. So in case hardening, we, we would heat the metal to a high temperature, but we would have that metal coated with something that contained a lot of carbon. And what happens in case hardening is when the metal reaches a critical temperature, it absorbs the carbon at the surface and allows the surface of the material to be hard while the internal, the middle of the metal, still stays so soft and ductile so that it can, it can give. It's a good choice for something that's gonna have a lot of abrasion resistance. However, remember case hardening is only on the outside shell of the metal. Look at this blade. Do you think if I had case hardened any of this blade, there would be any case hardening left? No, I don't think so. It would extend the life of the blade a little bit. But remember, the reason we started this video to begin with was because these doggone blades were costing $27 a piece. I got the cost down to $3 a blade. Is it worth spending the material to case harden it? No, I don't think so. A lot of people suggest using hard facing rod. 
So if you're not familiar with hard facing, it's a type of welding rod. It can be applied several different ways, but is a very, very hard material, extremely abrasion resistant. Think of bulldozer blades, excavator blades, backhoe buckets, especially doing rock work. They put a lot of that hard facing inside those buckets because otherwise they just wear out very quickly. Now, the problem with hard facing is the last time I priced it, it was probably somewhere around $100 a pound for the filler material. This $27 blade probably turned into a $50 blade by the time I was applying hard facing. So, I've got the blades to $3 a piece. It takes me roughly 15 minutes now to stamp out a set of blades. Here's a set that has not been ground yet. So to stamp them out with the iron worker, put the bend in them and sharpen them, maybe about 15 minutes a piece. A lot of people have made comments that they didn't actually see what, what it looked like and they didn't believe that I was being honest that they did a great job. So here's some video of us mowing the grass. That's my son, Bo. He's mowing grass. That's a Kubota L245. It's a, basically a 25 horsepower diesel two-wheel drive tractor. Pull in, it's a 60-inch Kubota finish mower. It's an RFM60. Those got the blades on it that we made. As you can see, it's doing a real nice job. You look out across here, it looks like a golf course. You can see what we have in mode. This is primarily Pensacola Bahia. Pensacola Bahia grows well in super dry situations. You can drive on it, the kids can play on it, ride four-wheelers on it, and it's pretty hard to kill. But when it dries out, it's hard to cut, especially when it puts the little seed pods up, they're like cutting wire. There are a few hangers, you can see them every now and then. Don't, some of this is just grass that's laid out on the ground, but every now and then there's a hanger. That's completely normal in Florida for dry Pensacola Bahia. But overall, if you look across this field, you can see it did, those blades did an outstanding job. Now, keep in mind, I sharpen the blades every time I mow the grass, simply because after three to four hours of mowing, the blades lose their sharpness just due to the sand that's here on the property. The blades edges have held up pretty doggone good. You can see I've hit some rocks. The nice thing about it is, this is a $3 blade. If it gets too messed up, I'll just make a new one. I really appreciate everyone's comments, concerns, ideas, and thoughts about this project. And thanks for watching it all the way along as I went through it. I really encourage you to always leave kind, thoughtful comments and concerns down below. I try to read every single one of them. As of right now, I'm gonna put this project to rest. I'm satisfied with $3 a blade and the 15 minutes it takes or so to make one set of blades. I'm really satisfied with that. If you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to the do -Right Fabrication YouTube channel. Also, between videos, if you want to see what's going on here in the shop and around on the farm, be sure to follow us on Instagram under do -Right Builder or on the do -Right Fabrication Facebook page. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you real soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and like us on Facebook, please. Somewhere down below here is a link. We've got a lot more really cool stuff coming. Is that right, camera guy? Is there a link down there? Send me a comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Click whatever link. Click something. See you soon.